Oh, hi everyone. So, I wanted to talk to you briefly about how I think civilization will end. The big problem that we're going to face and that we are facing is return on energy investment, okay, and return on material investment. If you go back a hundred years, for example, um, and you wanted to get a large source of oil, you might go to Texas or somewhere like that, and you would dig a well, and for the cost of one barrel of energy invested, you might get a return of 200 barrels of oil. That would be a 200 to 1 return on energy invested. Today, if you look at something like shale or tar sands, then you might only be investing one barrel of oil and you might only be getting back, say, 1.2 barrels of oil. So you're having to use a lot more energy to make the tar sands of a shale worth anything. And this is because they're terrible sources of energy and you need to do it on a massive scale to even make it profitable. In the United States, shale doesn't actually have to comply with any kind of environmental laws and there's a lot of investment going in, but honestly the dirty little secret is that it's not profitable at all. America is a massive country, okay? It can afford to contaminate some of its land because it's a huge country and who cares, right? The Americans don't particularly care. The United Kingdom is a small country, right? And we do care if any of our land is contaminated. And if you're going to be pumping liquid deep into the ground, guess what? It's going to come back up again. It's not going to stay under the ground. I think shale in the UK is absolutely ridiculous. I do not think we should be doing it. I don't think it can be done safely. Pump all of this chemicals in the ground, okay, and it sits there for say 50 years, um, this stuff is designed to actually fracture rocks, okay, it's pushed down with a lot of pressure, it isn't going to stay underground, it's going to seep into our drinking water, you know, a third of our water comes from water under the ground, okay, I just think shale is ridiculous, like I say, it's not profitable, especially not in the UK, I do not know why we are even doing it. We would need to send off the material to China um, to have it processed because China can actually do it. So we're going to be loading all this virtually worthless stuff onto boats and shipping it to China. And then, right, get this, they're going to actually sell it or advertise it as environmentally friendly gas, which is absolutely horrendous, right? And okay, let's say you're fracking in the middle of Guildford and all of a sudden, there's a leak. What are you going to do? Nothing. It'll wipe out so much money, in, just in terms of house prices. I don't know why the government are doing this. Don't put money into these ridiculous industries that's only going to harm the UK. If anything, just put more money into offshore wind. At least they generate electricity, right? And we are going to have an electricity shortfall in the UK. So we need to do something about the electricity and, you know, shipping shale to China isn't going to do anything for that. Now the other problem we're going to face is a lot of resources such as rare earth minerals and things are going to run out. And, you know, this is a real problem because so much of our technology and our electronics um, depend on these. So it basically means we're going to have a lot less material wealth in the future, but there are possible things that we could do to mitigate some of this. So, for example, Japan uh, are recycling close to 100% of all their metals, and they're very good at recycling. This would certainly help if we could create closed loops. So what's a closed loop? Well, at the moment, we are, for example, extracting oil, turning it into products, using the products, and then disposing of the products, let's say in another country or something. So the cycle is a linear cycle. We're extracting, manufacturing, consuming and throwing away these products. But if you move to a circular system, then keep a lot of the energy that you invested or keep the materials or you would maybe instead of throwing a consumer good away, you would repair it or you would do something else with it, which would actually mean that you get a lot more use out of it over its lifespan and you don't create so much waste. So like I say with Japan, Japanese are 
um, recycling a lot of metals and other materials. That's one thing we could do which would help. But we've still got the problem that we're going to have to live in a world with less energy in the future. Now, we could do nothing, but the consequences are probably going to be quite bad if we do nothing. So we've got a few models that we could look at. Um, both Cuba and North Korea have the backing of the USSR, who supplied them with a lot of cheap energy. And obviously when the USSR fell, these countries kind of diverged um, and kind of took two different um, ways of existing. So North Korea has a lot of very, very poor people, and it also has um, a sizable middle class in Pyongyang, which is one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is if you look at somewhere like Cuba, a lot of the people substitute their energy input and their food input and things with um, local farming and things. So that's another thing that we could um, do, which isn't a bad idea. I'm not suggesting we emulate Cuba exactly, but if everyone became less dependent on the system, if we started buying locally, um, if we started growing more and using a lot of our own um, goods and um, if we started using less energy, for example, or traveling less, or I even, I even think technology can help. Instead of flying to another country, we could, for example, do this. You know, we could talk to someone with webcams or something. Um, there's so much that we could actually do which would reduce our energy footprint, our carbon footprint. Um, so the other big problem that we face in the future is climate change. Now, climate change is pretty nasty. I mean, it's going to make living more difficult, generally speaking. There's going to be a lot more disease, a lot more parasites. There's, um, this is going to be compounded by the fact we're probably going to have less energy, which means less food. Um, not a lot of people don't realise that every calorie we eat, roughly speaking, um, can take up to two calories of petrol or other energy to produce, okay? Um, the actual amount of energy we use to produce any kind of um, food is quite phenomenal and you know as we move into a sort of world that's going to be more efficient we need to really consider what we can do to reduce our energy footprint um, in this way so yeah um, producing more local food being more independent um, would require a bit of a revolution but I think we could do it certainly in Britain you know bring back that sort of wartime attitude where we would turn gardens into allotments and things like that that would um help but ultimately we're just going to have to accept the fact that the efficiency of everything is going to go down and how i think the world will end coming back to the initial point i think we're going to have booms and busts just like we do now except the busts are going to get a little bit more harsh each time and the booms are going to get a little bit smaller i think we're just going to decline that way and i don't even think most people are going to really notice it i think it's already started I think a lot of the sources of oil and things, we, we are probably overestimating them. And even if, let's hypothetically say, we've got another 50 years or 100 years of energy left, it's still going to run out eventually. Um, now, there is a lot we can do, but that is the point. We need to really start now. Okay, We need to start thinking about this. We need to preserve old-fashioned ways of doing things um, and start using that technology again, you know? I mean, for thousands of years, a lot of people had a reasonable standard of life with older forms of technology that, you know, we could still use, but might exist in a museum, but let's put that back into action, you know? Let's perhaps try to um, reduce the amount of energy that some people use by giving incentives, you know? No one really likes to be punished, but if people who um, are more environmentally friendly, you know, perhaps give them a tax break or something. You know, if um, if a company is, you know, project uses less energy or less materials when it projects, then perhaps we could give it some kind of tax break or I don't know. I'm just putting ideas out there. But yeah, anyway, our way of life is going to have to change. It's not sustainable, and that's a real shame. I would also like to point you to an animation that's in the description but it'll tell you more about where the world is going but um yeah it's going to be roughly the same thing as here so except in a lot more detail and they actually have the numbers so do check that out 
and thank you very much for listening.